Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago. As usual, it was a wild one. It was a wild one today. So I found some clips. I don't know. I just threw together what I had. I grabbed whatever people sent to me. <laughs> I think there's some good stuff in there. I'm not sure. I did get this fresh new sweatshirt from a little bird right here. Oh, yes. He's muted again. Good Lord. Law Talk with Mike. There, there you have it. Zipper. Zipper style, of course. The way I like it. <laughs> That's cool. I also got some other stuff. You know, I'm going to do that. I was in my office today, so I got a bunch of stuff. It was like Christmas. Thank you guys for everything. I got some nice coffee. I got two things of it. And I thought that uh, I thought this was ju just a viewer being nice, which it is. But I also think I'm being trolled by the Georgia contingent here. I think that's what's going on. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. My Wolverines have a potential tussle if they if they can get past TCU with Georgia. I think that's what that might be about. I think that's what that might be about. I'm not sure. Also, also, I got a screaming goat. Oh, yeah. I like the screaming goat. <laughs> I don't know why I got a screaming goat, <laughs> but I like it. Also, there's even more. I got a I got a whole book by FD Food Fairy right here. Subset so Phonics. It's got a bunch of quotes in there from Daryl Brooks. <laughs> That's pretty funny stuff. I mean, they're quotes, they're quotes, but I'm sure I'd be banned for it. <laughs> Not that I said it. I didn't say it. <laughs> Oh, fun stuff. Do I have anything else around here? No, no, that's it. I just wanted to do that. I, and I want to thank Katie who sent me the first clip here because I wouldn't have known about it. It's Judge O'Brien in Washtenaw County. She looks like she fell into a vat of Xanax, but it's fun. It's fun stuff. Let's Let's get it started, shall we? Supplemental number three, People versus Dominique Olive, 2286FH. Michael Doby for the People. Afternoon. Hi. Mr. Olive, please raise your right hand to be sworn. Sworn before what? Please raise your right hand to be sworn, sir. For what? I need to arraign you on a probation violation. There are some additional allegations. I have a minute. I'm right about my lawyer. Well, can please raise your right hand to be sworn. No, I can't do that. I didn't violate probation. I can't appoint an attorney to represent you on the violations unless you raise your hand to be sworn. Tell us your name and tell me if you can afford to hire an attorney today. I can't afford, I can't afford to hire an attorney. I need to talk okay. to the attorney. Well, I need to take that as testimony. So please raise your right hand to be sworn. No. I can't do that. Nothing to do with the case. Just about this house is I've never been before you for an arraignment. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, Mr. Olive? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. So um, you're before the court on allegations that you violated your probation. Can you afford to hire your own attorney today? No. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Just a moment. Well, how did I violate probation, Ms. O'Brien? Just a moment. I want to make sure that Mr. Overwater is with us. Judge, I am I am present. I believed I was conflicted on this matter. On um, case number 2286FH, my record shows that the public defender was representing him initially. I understand that um, Sandra White is representing him on 2022-607, um, but this is the older case. 
2286 FA. I would think that the 22607 allegation would be a probation violation as well. What's the probation violation, Overwater? Thank you, Mr. Well, he's not on probation yet on 607 because he's still at the pretrial stage. All right, let me hear. Wow. Right, but if, if if the allegations in 207 were allegedly committed and while he was on probation for 86, those allegations would be alleged as a probation violation against him and the conflict would, would stand on both cases. I see. Could you stand just for purposes of... I see. <laughs> Judge, take a nap, all right? Arraignment today? Certainly. Okay, thank you. So now, um, Mr. Olive, you're before the court on an allegation that um, you allegedly committed the offense of possession of drug paraphernalia, and there's a case pending in 14A District Court for that. The offense date was October 12th, 2022. It's also alleged that on May 26, 2022, you committed an offense of exposure um, at the Washtenaw, I don't know, um, offense of exposure by the Washtenaw County Sheriff's Department. And there's a report, um, number 22004392. Added count three is that I don't know this judge, but apparently it's Washtenaw County. Um, <clears throat> in fact, this guy, based on his charges, I'm not sure if I haven't done one before. There's a guy who who was putting cameras in the restrooms, and I'm not sure if it's him. I don't think it is, but it, but he it reminds me of that. Uh, you were not to have assaultive, abusive, threatening, or intimidating behavior. However, it's alleged that on May 26, 2022, while in your cell at the Washtenaw County Jail, displayed your in your right hand while making inappropriate gestures, Officer. Um, by Washtenaw County Sheriff's Court, that number I previously had. So at this time, Mr. Overwater, how do you wish to speak? Your Honor, my client would stand mute and ask that a plea of not guilty be entered on his behalf. And I'd ask this matter be set for a probation violation hearing. Um, his other matter is currently set for January 12th. 2023 before your honor i'd ask for the same date okay and then based on what you've just heard in terms of the allegations do you believe you'll be able to continue representing him or do we need to appoint separate counsel for him if those are the only allegations i don't foresee a conflict based on that okay um I don't know why the the pending B and E to a vehicle charges that Ms. White represents him for. I don't know why those wouldn't be alleged as violations, but I'm not sure when they're alleged to have occurred. Okay. So, um, hearing on January twelfth at um, one thirty. We're moving that case up to next week. Not oh, week. oh, I'm sorry. We're moving that case up to next week, which is even better. Um, so it'll come up quicker. Um, so how many cases? How many cases am I being charged for right now? Well, right now, the only case that we've called is your prior case, um, Larsenina Building, case number 2286FH. How many? The maximum how many? potential penalty is four years and you're entitled to a contested evidentiary hearing on those allegations so we can set this hearing for december yes there is a uh, janelle playlist that, that already exists it's good stuff 15th um because that's when his other case is going to be up next okay thank you your honor judge the um, the new offense that he's got pending uh, predates 
the, the allegations predate when he was put on probation on this case, so it's not a violation on this case, so there's no conflict for me on this case. Okay. Okay, good. So um, I'm setting the hearing for um, December 15th, and I will remand you pending that hearing. Anything further, counsel? No, thank you. No, thank you, Your Honor. Okay, we'll see you next week, Mr. Allen. If you haven't hit like and subscribe, I just want you to know that you're hurting Jack's feelings. And that we won't. Um, okay, this was also sent to me. It is cute. It's Judge Stuckey. It puts it puts me in mind of Judge Middleton's story time. Today we're doing Judge Stuckey story time, and it's just as charming. It's it's really kind of fun. So, oh no, no, I didn't rush down to see that. Okay. <laughs> Well, there's nothing can be as bad as that old courthouse when you're writing your orders on top of the recycling bins. I mean, that's just, you know, that tells you there's just not enough. <laughs> oh, <there>. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> but the the amenities, I heard that the um, I heard that the inside of it was really nice. There is going to be space for us to go and talk privately with our clients oh, and not at the great. corner in the hallway by the bathroom. <laughs> uh, places where we can write other than our laps. Right, right. Oh. And I've been trying to huddle with your client in that corner as the ADA is walking by. Yeah, that, that that's that's that was never good. <laughs> well, that's one of the nice things about Caldwell and Seguin is, uh, you know, I mean, there's, yeah, you know, nice. Oh my God, they're not offices. There's like little breakout rooms. Right, now. Right. My smaller counties, I mean, uh, you know. Gonzales of Avaca, Colorado, you know, I guess that's the hallway outside on the lawn, you know, somewhere. But, <laughs> you know. but, you know, I mean, we had. It was so bad. Sometimes I'd go, to like another, I'd go to another floor with my client to, to talk to them, and then they would be like, ask them to scream down, you know, the, the flight of stairs to say our hearing was next. I mean, it was just, it was so bad. So bad. <laughs> I mean, you know, right before we the pandemic hit, remember we had that fight in the hallway in Lockhart mm -hmm. outside of one of our hearings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you can't make that. They're up. like, just Chucky, will you get off the bench for a minute <laughs> so that we can go help out? You know, help out in the, the hallway. Was it Don Meredith fighting somebody? <laughs> Don. Fill up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm gonna tell Don. No, to it was a. Uh, I mean, it was the same thing that you have, like, an attorney general court. It was, yeah. you know, family, right. extended family fight with extended family. I don't even think it was lit against our parties yeah. to our case. I think it was, like, the, <laughs> the supporting. And that's the way it always is. It's, it's yeah. never the people in court. Where, I mean, I guess. By the way, he's right. I can relate to all this. I've lived this. It's funny. I'm not, I don't practice in Texas, but I've had a lot of experiences like this. This is very common. It's just, you don't get to see it. Somebody's in a breakout room and they're waiting for him. So they're just chit chatting. That That's all that's going on. But I, I find the whole thing charming. It's occasionally does, but normally it's, you know, it's aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandfathers, you know, that are <laughs> angry at somebody about something, you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to close their breakout room here in about a minute. This is my favorite uh, part, though. The voice of God. Actually, I'll tell them I'm going to give them one more minute. <laughs> we have this new thing that freaks everybody out that I can actually speak over uh, into the breakout rooms. Hello, this is Judge Stuckey. It's uh, about 325, so I'm going to give you another minute, and then I'll close your breakout room. Thank you. <gasps> You like doing that. <laughs> it would start on me. I don't like doing that. I've only done it like three or four times. <laughs> and they're like, what? <laughs> She's right. She works with him every day. She knows that he, he's not even aware of it, he, <laughs> but he does. <laughs> he gets a little charge out of busting in the breakout rooms, and I don't blame him. I would, too. <laughs> uh, she calls him out, and, he, and, and no, she's right. What's going on? What is he talking about? Is so, it so it's just a disembodied voice. Your your picture doesn't go in there. You start no, talking. it's like the. I'm just gonna say it's like the voice of God. Oh, I mean, it just yes. like. But, and I say that because you could have like <laughs> ten breakout rooms, and it would say the same thing to oh, awesome. every breakout room. So, that was scary. I mean, honestly, it's you probably kind of scary. Internet. But. 
he's having some internet issues, so he has his camera off. Um, I'm okay. going to ask that he be permitted to keep his camera off when he comes back in. I'm, I am going to ask him a few questions. I'm hoping he doesn't lose his internet because he, he wasn't able to hear me very well towards the end. So Okay. So I just close the breakout room, then I'll force him back here about maybe 30 seconds, and then cool. if you want, we'll go back on record. I'll swear him in, and then you can ask him some questions. Uh, um, he was dry humping all that, dude. Yeah, that's all I was saying. He was getting after it when I pulled up. Alrighty, good morning. Yeah, I, a lot of people sent it to me, and like I said, I threw together what I could. I did not see what happened on the on the bond violation in three B today. I just know that a lot of people are talking about it, so it, it might be it might be great. But I I don't have I don't have the clip. I have this one. It might be better than this one, but th this one I find fascinating. It's not funny. It's it's serious as all get out. But uh, I thought it was interesting. And this is the Jay Johnson. Today is December 7, 2022. This is the matter of State of Georgia versus Morris Polite. Charged with, I'm sorry, excuse me, Jonathan Powell. State of Georgia versus Jonathan Powell. Warrant number 2022 CW 54924. Murder. 20. 22 CW 54925, possession of a firearm um, by a felon or first offender probationer. Warrant number 2022 CW 54926, possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime. Representing the state is Ms. Brianna Woods. Representing the defendant is Mr. Javarik Rogers. Ms. Woods, your witness. Your Honor, the state calls Detective L. Rowling. Sir, if you could turn your camera on and your. All right, uh, Detective Roland, we raise your right hand for me, please. Do you solemnly spread the testimony that you'll provide um, in this preliminary hearing, State versus Jonathan Powell, but the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help to God? Yes, ma'am, I do. All right, you can lower your right hand. Detective Powell, um, who are you employed with? Detective Roland, I'm employed with this. <laughs> Clayton County Police Department. Okay, and how long have you been employed with the Clayton County Police Department? 11 years. Okay, um, and what is uh, your title at this point? Detective, correct? That's correct, Detective. Um, and are you um, the detective that is in charge for um, the case that is involving a defendant by the name of Jonathan Powell? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and have you reviewed um, all of the case reports for um, that case as it pertains to this preliminary hearing today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Detective Powell, um, on November 6, 2022, did Clayton County police officers respond to 6331 Tara Boulevard? That's correct. And what did they respond um, for? They responded to an active shooting uh, was taking place between the defendant and now deceased victim. Okay. Um, and upon officers' arrival, um, what were the first things that they witnessed or saw? Um, upon their arrival, um, the both the defendant and the victim were in the middle of the intersection of uh, Tara Boulevard and I believe Old Dixie Road, uh, where the two were. Uh, having a physical altercation where Mr. Powell was striking the victim uh, with the pistol that he was uh, had in his hand. All right. And um, at that time, were there any witnesses on scene? Uh, there were a couple of witnesses that was left on, at the scene during that time. Um, in particular, there was um, a male witness um, and he was homeless. I'm not sure about the male witness. There was a female witness as well. Um, she did provide a written statement as well. Okay. Okay. So what was uh, what was provided by the female witness? She observed the altercation taking place. Um, one second. Excuse me, I'm going to object to you. I'm not sure exactly what the detective is, is 
doing at this moment, but if he's going to be referring to a document to, to guide his testimony, um, I would ask that it be published and that both, both sides have access. Are you refreshing your recollection? That's pretty much what I was doing, Your Honor, just refreshing my recollection. Um, but I can go based off uh, what was known um, if you prefer. All right, go ahead. Go ahead and proceed, um, Mr. Mr. Rogers. When you sound like Barry White, you can do whatever the hell you want. There's um, Attorney Rogers. He's going to go ahead and go off of his mental personal knowledge. Uh, she 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 observed the uh, defendant chasing uh, the subject, and she noticed that he did have a a gun in his hand while he was pursuing the the victim. Um, the altercation in the intersection. Um, she hung around once the police got there and, and, and was able to control the scene and, and make the arrest. Now, did any any witnesses advise that they also heard gunshots? Yes, there were several uh, witnesses that did not provide a written statement uh, that alerted one of the officers, uh, one of the first responding officers on the scene. Um, he was just barely off the on-ramp of the interstate. Um, he backed his vehicle up on the highway using this emergency lights and equipment uh, where he was able to uh, visual, take a visual of the defendant and then take him into custody. Okay. Um, now, the, you said the defendant was taken into custody. Um, was there a weapon on his person? Yes, uh, he was ordered down at gunpoint to get on the ground and just before he did, he talked from his garment. I'm not sure if it was a waistband or his hoodie, but he tossed it from his garment onto the ground um, and complied with the officer's commands. Right. And did officers um, speak with that defendant on scene? Uh, they did. Uh, the arresting officer did speak with them on under Miranda once the scene was uh, secured and safe. Okay, and what did the defendant advise to those officers after Miranda was... Well, let me ask you this. I'm sorry, let me step back. Did he consent to speak with officers without an attorney present? He did consent to speak with that officer at the time, yes. And what did the defendant advise? Uh, he basically said that he, he and, and his intentions was to uh, kill the defendant um, and his weapon and what he had. And... Um, uh, he admitted to some other other things that were documented, um, but that's those are the primary things that that stand up. Did he admit to shooting the victim? It admitted to. Um and um, was it yeah. determined? Excuse me, not not an objection exactly, but I don't know if it's just on my end. But it's, it's there are times when the the audio is cutting out a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to make sure. I, I was hearing exactly what was being said. Okay. Sorry, audio on my end or? Yeah, yeah, it was on, yeah, it was on your end, detective. Yeah. yeah, if you like, could just, if you could maybe like, yeah, s just speak very closely to the. Even the defense attorney wants to hear the melodic tones. Uh, um, speaker, because I, I agree, Attorney Rogers, I, there's some things that are going in and out. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, and was it determined that the victim um, not all right. did actually decease? <laughs> that is the determination. Yes, he did pass due to the gunshot wound to the thigh. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, were y'all able to copy, hear that? Okay. And just, oh, do you know um, this defendant to be a convicted felon? Yes, uh, during my um, investigation, I, I did learn that he was uh, a convicted felon. Okay. Um, and for a charge of burglary out of Chatham County Superior Court in 2014? That is correct. Yes, ma'am. And, Your Honor, if you would just give me one second, please. Okay. <clears throat> And these events did take place in Clayton County, Detective Bowen? I'm sorry, I didn't. Can you repeat that? These events did take place in, in Clayton County? Yes, it did. 
No. Nothing no. further than the state, Your Honor. I'd like to see her ban him from Clayton County. All right, Mr. Rogers. In Fulton. Thank you. <laughs> uh, detective, you said you are the lead detective, right? That's correct. And have you had a chance to review all of the evidence that that law enforcement has in this possession? I'm sorry, say that one more time. I asked, what, have you had an opportunity to review the evidence that's in law enforcement possession? Have you had an opportunity to review it? Yes. Um, let's start. I guess first question, is there, to your knowledge, is there any video of the incident? There is video of the initial shooting. Uh, but not actual of the after the shooting. Okay. I'm, I'm going to say back to you what I heard and, and just to make sure I got that right. You said there was a video of initial shooting and then it kind of blanked on. You said something about after the shooting. Uh, yes. The, um, the physical altercation after the shooting, there's, there's not video for that. This is where I don't get what's going on here. So there's a shooting, then we have a physical altercation. So these guys are going at it hard. One of them dies, but I don't see how whoever whoever you know ate the bullets was up for a physical altercation after that. I mean, I, I guess you're just going on adrenaline for a few minutes. And when you say there's video of the shooting, I guess first question: um, What is this? Is this video? What's the vantage point on the video? Like how far away? Um. It's kind of hard it's just the distance but it was still at the parking lot or within the parking lot of the texaco service station if that makes okay. thank you and is the the initial shooting as you understand it where does the initial shooting take place it's it's i believe that's west on upper riverdale road where the defendant was approaching from the uh, defendant was walking towards Terrell Boulevard, but okay. on Riverdale Road, the the, the uh, deceased was walking towards the defendant, so they were meeting each other. Okay, so coming from like Southern Regional, headed towards Terrell. Yeah, yes. Between, that's well. Okay. Um, and so you said they were coming to meet each other. They were walking. In, yes, they were meeting each other. I mean, who, where, where are you getting, where, how do you know that they were meeting each other versus just, you know, having to be out there? There was a, according to the defendant, there was a brief discussion via phone. Um, I can't recall if it was text or verbal. Um, the conversation did not go well. Um, so they were walking towards each, he, the, the, the defendant knew where the, victim should be at and was walking towards to meet him um you can see them both on the phone i'm sorry you can see the victim on the phone for a brief second as he's walking towards um as you put it the hospital towards the hospital okay and this is when you say you can see him on the phone you're talking about the video from the taxi cop that's correct okay. and then so the and is it well, let me ask you, do you have, have you executed any search warrants in this case? No search warrants, no. And have you searched any kind of phones or anything like that? The phones were um, taken for evidence, but at, at this time, no search warrants has been initiated on the phones. And so once, the, and let me ask you this, did you, did you respond to that, to the scene that night or... I, I mean, this might be typical. I don't do criminal defense, so I, I don't know. But it, it's interesting. This defense attorney, he knows he's not going to beat it at preliminary hearing. He's just going on a fishing expedition. He's like, all right, I've got my opportunity to find out what the cops know and don't know. I, I It doesn't matter for today's purposes, but it does matter for the future. So he's just going on a fishing expedition. That's all this is. Did you get it later? No, sir. Um, my supervisor instructed me to just... Uh, <laughs> meet the defendant at the headquarters. Uh, the scene was already uh, kind of closed off and sectioned off and he was already detained and in custody at the time. Okay. And as for, well, let me ask you this. Do you know whether or not, because the report that I've seen in, in the case, I believe it's from Officer Christian, um, 
But other than that, do you know whether or not anyone inspected the immediate area where the, the deceit was found? There were pictures of the scene um, sectioned off with police presence and police uniform marked units were sectioned off at that where the defendant was found. Okay. And actually, and let me clarify the question, because if I understand it, it seems that there may be at least two relevant locations. There's a, you mentioned a shooting and then you mentioned a physical altercation. Yes. These are happening in two different locations. The shooting occurred on the property of the Texaco. Um, second view camera footage shows one person chasing the other, the defendant chasing victim, and then they're off camera. So the final uh, location was Upper Riverdale Road, Old Dixie um, intersection. Okay. And do you know whether the officers checked, I guess, the those areas and the path in between the areas for, for weapons or anything like that? I do not. Do you know whether or not any weapons were recovered uh, other than the one alleged to be in Mr. Powell's possession? No, sir. No other weapons were recovered other than the one that Mr. Powell had. Well, he was hoping for another weapon recovery to, to create an alibi or a self-defense claim. And the people who report the gunshots, do they... Do they say that they saw the shootings occurring or only that they heard gunshots? There were several people that heard the gunshots. Um, the one victim that wrote a statement, I, 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 I will have to refresh my memory to determine whether or not she actually heard it and, and what she actually saw at the time. Let me ask you this. If you... If you do you know how many times the, the decedent was shot? Like how many gunshot wounds are alleged? I believe it was only one gunshot wound that struck the, the victim. Shell cases recovered? There were shell cases recovered, yes. Do you know what caliber or calibers, plural? Uh, I believe it was a nine millimeter. Bars. From a, I'm sorry, nine millimeter uh, shell cases. And to your knowledge, is there only one caliber of casing found? That, that's correct, yes. And to the extent that, it, I, and I don't want to assume too much, but I'm guessing you think that these cases have something to do with this case. What is that, what leads you to believe that those casings are specifically related to, to this case? Um, based on the report, what I read and what I recall, the spent shell casings were recovered near the area where the, where the shooting, the initial shooting occurred. And then, <laughs> I mean, what 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 answer did you expect? What makes you think those casings are related to this case? Because they were found at the scene of the crime, and they were the only ones found at the scene of the crime. So we just went ahead and thought, you know what, they might be related, <laughs> which matched uh, the caliber of the one live round that was found in the chamber of the weapon that Mr. Uh, the, the defendant had in his possession. And do you know if anybody, well, let me ask, was Mr. the decedent, was he have, Was he searched as far as his, his possessions and everything? Yes, at the time he was. Do you know whether or not there was a weapon found either on him or in an immediate area or anything? There was no, no other weapon found on or, or near him. And as far as Mr. Powell, I know you said that he admitted to some other things, I believe is, is the, uh, yes, there's other things that were documented. Um, let me ask you, was there any discussion of prior difficulties between the two parties? The 
I think, well, what I believe um, incited this altercation is, yes, they they had some uh, issues between each other in, involving the gun. And we say the gun, are we talking about the gun that is alleged to be? The gun that Mr. Powell had in his possession. Yeah, you know, the murder weapon. Mr. Powell tell you he had been threatened by the decision. He used words that he interpreted as being threatening. Uh, if that's if that's okay for me to say. Okay, he at least as you understand it, Mr. Powell took it as a threat. Yes. <laughs> Did he ever tell you that? Oh, excuse me. I'm not sure. Let me let me ask. Cause I'm not sure. If I've seen discussions of, of statements that were made and I know there was conversation I think that was had with Officer Christian was that correct? There was some conversation between him and, and Officer Christian, yes. Okay, and then he also had a conversation with you? That's Mr. correct. Um, and is it your understanding that Mr. Powell told you that, that the decedent had threatened to kill him? In so many words, yes. And to spend a little bit of time on, on the, I know there was a discussion of conversations being had with him. The the first one that, that I'm aware of is alleged to have been with Officer Christian. Do you know whether or not there's video of that conversation? I do not know if that was the So, well, then let me ask it this way, then. I guess that would be safe to say that you haven't seen that video of the, the interrogation in the field. I, I, I have not watched the full video, no. And the, the conversation that you had with Mr. Powell, had, is that conversation recorded? Yes, it was recorded. And that one was at headquarters? That's correct. And to your knowledge, is there the, the witnesses to the shooting? I know you mentioned one person wrote a statement. Is that what is that person saying that they saw? As in, do they see the entire? Do they see the parties approach? What do they say that they saw? Your Honor, I'm going to object. Uh, this witness already testified to that information, so um, unless Mr. Rogers wants to maybe attack one of those statements made, I just ask that we continue oh, on oh, to the next question. Oh, oh, overrule, Miss 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 Woods. Go ahead, Mr. Rogers. Thank you. Um, so the witness, what are, are they saying they saw the approach of the two parties? I, I, I don't want I can't recall if they actually saw it or if they actually heard it and saw it afterwards. Um, like, and I will have to refer back to it to be for certain. But let me ask you, so the, the video at the Texaco, are both parties shown on that video or is it just? Yes, sir. Both parties are shown on the video. About how far apart are they when the shooting occurs? When the shooting occurred, again, from the camera angle, it's hard to tell, but I would maybe 10 feet. 10 feet. He cut out the end. Did you say maybe 10 to 15 feet? Is that what you were saying at the end? That's right, yes. E, that's close range. And is the video like well defined enough that you can identify, you know, who is who on the, yes. on the video? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if he doesn't have discovery yet or what. But this guy's like curious about this. He's like, the question is basically: so you, so you actually have a videotape of my client shooting the guy? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be tough. <laughs> That's where we are. <laughs> um, no further questions at the moment. All right, any redirect, Ms. Woods? No, ma'am. All right, closing arguments. Mr. It's Ms. not a waiver reserve. 
All right, Mr. Rogers. Uh, yeah, I'll submit on the evidence. All right, so based upon the evidence presented, there is sufficient probable cause to bind all three charges over to the Superior Court of Clayton County. That's the order. All right, everybody, we will start with Ms. Rosenhoover, Kenneth King. Kenneth King. Great. Okay, I haven't even seen this. I don't know if anything's in here. I just had it because I had, I had recorded it and I didn't have any time today. So I'm, I'm going to watch this for a little while and have a cocktail. Uh, but I, like I said, I, I, I can't even tell you I've got something interesting coming up here. It's just Judge Manning. So, you know, it's probably charming. Raise your hand. Wave your hand for me. Mr. King. Rosen, there you go. All right, it's uh, free trial is position seven. 22 CP 211260, Kenneth King, 126 days without indictment. There is no bond as of August the 6th. Cruelty to children in the first, cruelty to children in the second. Two counts of reckless conduct. Free trial. Free trial. No prior arrest. All right, Ms. Rosenhoover. Your Honor, Mr. King is 24 years old. He is born and raised here in Georgia. His entire family lives here. The address on file is 1358 Epworth Street, Southwest, and that's where his parents live. Um, he would be able to return to stay with them. I spoke with his dad today um, and confirmed that. Your Honor, his father does own his own company, and his mom is college educated. He himself um, did you, not, Caroline. or he did graduate high school and is attempting to get it, or he is attempting to get his GED, so he didn't graduate, apologies. Um, and prior to his arrest, he was working at company DA and cabs, installing cabinets um, and doing other demolition work. He would be able to get other employment. Um, Your Honor, we will acknowledge that he these charges are incredibly serious, and Mr. King is well aware of that, but he has at this point been in custody now for 128 days waiting for a bond. He's still on a no-bond status, um, and the case has not been indicted, and he has no criminal history whatsoever. So we would ask for a $30,000 bond total, um, and I would ask the court to do $15,000 on count one, $10,000 on count two, and 2,500 on each of the reckless conducts. All right, it's on Johnny. Your Honor, um, I believe this is with the Crimes Against Children Unit. I did notify them that this hearing was upcoming today, but I don't think I see anybody from the unit, so I will step in. Um, I understand, Your Honor, that our office did reach out to the victim's grandmother in this case but there was no response to our office's call. Um, out of an abundance of caution, Your Honor, the state respectfully requests a bond of $20,000 on count one, $10,000 on count two, and uh, $7,500 on each of the subsequent counts of reckless conduct. All right. right. Total of $45,000 and no contact with the victim children in this case, Your Honor. Okay, so uh, Ms. Rosenhoover, the incident location, so where are the children living? Are they living at that same incident location? No, Your Honor. Um, that incident location was Mr. King's prior address. It's a duplex with his parents. They are with their grand, or yes, their grandmother in Richmond, I believe. Okay, okay, all right. Thank you, Van. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons, no further contact. Also have Michaela White. No further contact with um, two minor children, initials KK for both of them. You have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, except for court, lawyer, work, medical. And, sir, if you work, you have to give us the name of your employer a schedule and the location you'll be working and proof of that employment. All right. You need to give it to Ms. Rosenhoover. She can give it to the state and also let the ankle monitoring company know too. So if you have to interview for a job, you can include that. All right. With no further contact with um, those two children. So I'll go with a 15, 10, 3, and 3. 15, 10, 3, and 3. Best of luck to you, sir. You can lay the boots. Thank you, Judge, and I believe that concludes my business, if I may be excused. Yes, ma'am. Good to see you, Professor, this morning. Um, Good. Chat real quick before you go. You want Ms. Rosenhoover, too? 
Oh, oh, I thought that was Miss Amjadi who said she was sleeping. Oh, no, it's Miss Brady. I'm so sorry. Miss <laughs> Brady, you can't get rid of me so easily. <laughs> good Thank try, Miss Bray. Thank you, Miss Rosemary. Have a good weekend. Melvin Bernard Pugh. All right, there we go. 22CP209239. Miss, oh, there she is. Okay. Uh, let's see, 201 days on indictment, got theft by shoplifting, <laughs> excuse me, felony and possession of drug related objects. As of August 30th, there is a $8,000 good bond. Great round. In regards to Mr. Pew, 45 prior arrests, um, at least seven misdemeanors. A couple of those are for theft by shoplifting. Uh, currently has an open case for 21 CP 201741 for theft by shoplifting, criminal trespass, drug related objects. Uh, uh, 2012 conviction for theft by taking. He has a couple of FTAs. There's a whole out of Atlanta. And then there's four other, five other FTAs 15, 16, 16, 17, and 18. Nothing further. So, Peraza, go ahead. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Mr. Pugh has been accepted into the Hope House. Uh, it's a living and treatment facility. I yeah, sent Mr. Idea. Johnny and you um, his acceptance letter if you'd like to review that. Um, Your Honor, we're asking if you could send him directly to this program um, so he can get treatment. Um, they're, they, he's been on the wait list for a while, and they've been holding his spot. Um, it's been a while to get another hearing so he could get into the program. And so we're just asking that you UJ arm to this program, Your Honor. Yes, I'm done. Your Honor, that does sound like a reasonable request. Uh, it would hopefully address some of the underlying issues here. If I could just request that he be placed on an ankle monitor before being UJ arm to the program. Okay. So, uh, Ms. Sarfarazi, what I'll do is I'm going to put a number just in case something happens in the program falls through, so he'll still have an opportunity to get out, okay? Thank you, so, I appreciate that. All right, so we'll do UJR to the hold, I mean, excuse me, to the, what's the name of the program we need to put? Hope House. Hope House. And Ms. Young, don't we need to put like a specific person? I think Mr. Douglas said it has to be a specific person they're released to. Uh, do they, if they have a name, but it, it needs to be a specific person or the program. Okay. So we'll do UJ ordered that. And if by chance something happens and that kind of goes afoul, we'll put um, 4000 on count one and $250 on count two. No hey, drug. Go oh, ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, I would also ask if Hope, Hope House would need to, um, the jail would need to take him to Hope House. So when the bed, the bed is available, um, I could produce, I can make that uh, transport order for you, Your Honor, and I can have the information of the direct person and uh, contact information of people in the Hope House. Okay, and you put in there, perfect. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Da -da -da -da. Ankle butter paid for by the Orca Project with a 24-hour curfew except for court, lawyer, medical, and the program at Hope House. Stay away from 2750 Donnelly Hollowell Parkway and stay away from all Dollar General stores. You got 4,000 on count one, 250 on count two. If not, release the UJR to the Hope House. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. Judge, Judge Manning. Uh -huh. um, seven North Booth Two. Can we do him next to Vice Jackson? You just walk back in. Okay, thank you, sir. Well, let's see, what number is that? Position nine. Nine. Okay, hold on. Isn't that one? Was that one removed? <laughs> um, I don't. Oh, Tobias Jackson. I got it. Oh. Is Mr. Joe here? Does not look like Mr. Cho is here. Yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Cho's not here. He's got a five thousand dollar good bond. Did you just want to reset? It's happy hour. Oh, he's we right. can't hear you, sir. You're on mute. What, right. what do y'all want to do? Quality. It's a criminal damage to property. <laughs> oh, he can't get a UJR. 
Because he's an APD repeat offender, the state can't consent to that. Oh, well. Uh, Your Honor, I, I can reach out to Mr. Cho and just see. Okay, okay we'll let her reach out to Mr. Cho and then we'll, uh, I think he's angry. Yeah, I think he is. So, um, yeah, I mean, we can reset it till Tuesday, I guess, maybe. Is that possible? I mean, Mr. Cho, he must, he must be tied up in court because he's usually on time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. No, I don't mind can, handling it. But comes, it well, he had one more thing. He had one more thing to come back and say to us. He is telling you off. All right. Okay. All right. Have a seat, sir. You got to listen. Have a seat. Have it. A- yeah, I think, I think there's an oh, MH issue because I, I know that name. I don't believe right. it. Uh, yeah, I am too. Okay. Yeah. Stand by, sir. Mr. Yeah, Com- Your Honor. Mr. Sir, 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 sir. He can't. He'll, he'll he'll be back. He'll be back. He'll be back. Uh, Your Honor, I just spoke with Mr. Cho. Um, he's logging in now. Okay, hold on, sir. He's coming. <laughs> okay, so until Mr. Cho gets on, I got Mr. Cho with two cases. He's number one and two on your calendar. Okay. The Lando McQuarrie. I got you. I'm All not right. gonna do you, bro. You gotta wait to the end. Ah, oh, girl, I'm on a paid parking up until 5 30. that's why i gotta get to him wait <laughs> i got to go all right we'll do position one and two thank you all right uh so let's see as soon as cho gets on here we'll, we'll handle his that's case right two two yeah. cp two zero seven seven five one delando mccrary wave your hand sir he's there in six hours no idea 260 <laughs> days without indictment as of 8 11 there is a $70,000 good bond, armed robbery, possession of firearm by convicted felon, ag assault, and possession of firearm during a felony. Position 2, 21 CP 203468, 260 days without indictment, Delando McCrary, theft by receiving stolen property, possession of firearm during the convic- by a convicted felon, driving on suspended or remote license, possession of drug related objects, possession of marijuana less announced, acquiring a license plate for the purpose of concealing identification of a motor vehicle. And I think that's a 5,500 split bond on that case. Yes. Yeah, that's a $5,500 split bond with mm-hmm. one, two, three charges, UJR. So, Rich, in regards to Mr. McCrary, 14 prior arrests, old capital CWAC in 93, charge associated with CWAC in 2013, two misdemeanor convictions, 2012 C-Wagon? FDA, nothing further. All right, go ahead, Miss Bray. Okay, what? Your Honor, uh, Mr. Time. McQuarrie is 47 years old, lifelong resident of Georgia. All of his family resides here. The address pretrial has, if it's the 1528 Mosley Place, that is the correct address, Your Honor. Um, he did obtain his GED. He also has his master barber license um, from Middle Georgia Tech. Um, he has a brother here, um, well, siblings here. Um, if he is released, he does have a job that he can return to his Tanner Moving Company. Um, taking into account that it's 260 days, we did his prelim back on August 29th, Your Honor, and the case hasn't been indicted. I am asking for a substantial reduction on the uh, on the first case. I'm asking for 10, 5, 5, and 5. What is that? All right. What about second case? Second case. I mean, what I mean, is that UJR gun? You can make money with a skill at least. But, but know, just make it half <laughs> whatever the 5,500 is. Just, just make it half. I guess somebody came off of because before it shows that Atlantic Bonding Company paid that, but. Right. They had, but. Came off so of sometimes it. Sometimes when you pick up another case, they'll come off. All right. All right. This I'm Johnny. Your Honor, given the defendant's criminal history, the nature of the charges alleged, um, furthermore, the fact that the court did find on August 29th of 2022 that bond was fair and reasonable, the state's position is that bond on both of these cases is fair and reasonable, and we respectfully request that the court keep them as they are. All right. Position one. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Ankle monitor paid for by the company through the ARCA project with a 24-hour curfew except for court, lawyer, medical, job. Proof, proof of employment, sir, scheduled, the location you'll be working. And 
You have to let the ankle monitor company know and Miss Bray so that she can let the um, DA know. If not, they'll revoke your bond. Stay away from Larry's Quick Stop at 2717 Sylvan Road. And previously in August, there was a hold. So if there's a hold on you, sir, I'm not sure if it's still there. You'll have 48 hours once you're released from that. It was something. It was on there before. So I don't know if something comes up, Miss Bray. Woo, Miss Bray. You know, oh, I would, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm still here. Hold on. Okay. I was looking to see if there was a hold. I'm like, well, I put it on in August. So if it hadn't went away, he has 48 hours to have the ankle monitor placed okay. on your ankle. It was uh, on there before, sir. So if it's still out there or something pops up, excuse me, you have 48 hours to have that ankle monitor placed on your ankle. Okay. So I got 10, 10. 15 and 10. 10, 10, 15, and 10. On um, the second position, got uh, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. That ankle monitor is paid for by the county through ORCA projects. Driving, uh, no driving without a valid license. Stay away from State Farm Auto Insurance Company in either, um, excuse me, offices. Stay away from State Farm? What if he's friends with Jake? Let's see. So, uh, one thousand on count one, two thousand on Jake. count two. Ask him to launch at Chick Fil A. I'll keep it the same on count and three, four, and five, and two hundred and fifty dollars on count six. One thousand, two thousand. UJR, 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 and two hundred and fifty. Same thing, sir. You got that ankle monitor paid for by the county. Twenty-four hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical. If it's employed in employment, you got to get proof of employment, name of your employer, the schedule, and the exact location you're working. Supply it to Miss Bray. And to the ankle monitoring company. Best of luck to you, sir. You can lead the booth. Okay, so that first case, it was 45, because you know math isn't our strong point. It was 45, right? right? Uh, I didn't even do the math. I just wrote the number down as right. You know me. <laughs> the math, that, the math is a you problem. 10, 10, 5, and 10. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I mean, really, you could ban most of the world from State Farm and they'd be like, that's fine. That, <laughs> I really didn't want to hang out at State Farm. But <laughs> what 35? 35. No, I'm sorry, 10, 10, 15, and 10. So 45, oh, you're right. 10, oh, 10, 15, okay. 10. Okay. Thank you, Miss Bray. I hear, that, uh, I hear that tow truck pulling uh, up. Now. Trying to be funny, but it might be out there. I got to go. Bye bye, y'all. Oh, uh, Miss Bray, have a good <laughs> weekend, Miss Bray. All right. Rodney Perkins. All right. Miss Collins is position 13, 22, CP 208147, Rodney Perkins. 245 days down indictment. There's a $5,000 good bond as as of, excuse me, guys, I've been talking all day. September the 1st on theft by receiving stolen property felony. Free trial. Judge, in regards to Mr. Perkins, extensive criminal history, 42 prior arrests, two FTAs, at least 12 felonies. He's currently still on probation for robbery, aggravated assault, sentenced in 2014, 15 years. Convictions is another robbery, ag, burglary, entering, theft by receiving, one, two, three, four, five of those, six, five, six, seven of those, a couple of financial transaction card frauds, and a couple of controlled substances, and eight arrests for probation, um, eight arrests for misdemeanor convictions, and two arrests for probation violation, nothing Couple further. Votes, you know. Hey, Ms. Collins, can you confirm his address? Yes, Your Honor. His address should be the address on file, which should be 875 Rodney Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30311. He lives there with his uncle. I have been in contact with his uncle. That is his address. Okay. Go ahead with your argument. Your Honor, he is uh, 55, well, actually 56 years old because he turned 56 while incarcerated. He has been incarcerated now for over 245 days. Uh, we did have a preliminary hearing back in September. Uh, however, his case is still unindicted, Your Honor. He is unable to afford the bond. I have been in constant contact with his uncle, and, and they are not able to afford the bond, Your Honor. And so we would ask, honestly, if you would consider a UJR, we have already like tried the bail project. They are <laughs> unable tell. to pay the bond. Um, <laughs> tell me. And so, Your Honor, that is the reason why we are requesting the UJR, the change in circumstances, 
uh, would be his lack of financial resources. He was previously working as a forklift operator uh, at the Great American's Cookie Factory. Prior to his arrest, he was at that position for three years, but he's been here now for all, over two. He's a forklift operator at the Cookie Factory. <laughs> I mean, let's just let him go <laughs> for crying out loud. That sounds so, uh, you know, it sounds so reasonable. 200 days, and so he hasn't been able to earn any income to put towards his bond. Uh, additionally, we would also uh, note the amount of time that he has been without incarceration. Uh, it's a theft by receiving. I doubt that this is high on the indictment list. Um, <clears throat> And I don't think that we'll have an expected date of indictment after today. And so, Your Honor, that is a, another reason why we would ask for the UJR. He is a lifelong resident of Georgia, he, specifically Fulton County. Uh, he does have the good address. Uh, he's a father. He has four children, one adult, three minors. He's a high school graduate, graduated from Mays High School. Uh, Your Honor, there is history, but he does have ties to Georgia. He has been sitting for over 200 days now. Uh, Your Honor, this is a, a nonviolent offense. And so, Your Honor, I would ask if you would consider a UJR. He has already been ordered to be on an ankle monitor. Uh, and so there is that already in place. Sure uh, I don't think there's any information on him that he's tried to contact his victim because I don't think that he knows this person personally or the police officers that arrested him. And so that would be our request today, Your Honor. Okay. Um, go ahead, Ms. Um, Johnny. Uh, Your Honor, the okay, state I'll is stop. going to consent to reducing it $2,500, but it looks like the court already did that a few months ago. Um, I guess the state would agree to reducing the bond amount $1,000 from the current $5,000 bond amount, Your Honor. Reduce it down to 1,000 or? Down by 1,000, Your Honor. See, it was 5,000 in July and 5,000 in September. Um, 3,500, Your Honor. All right. 2,500, Ms. Collins. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep her to her first number. Uh, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No further contact with Mark Humphrey. Ms. Young, this is on the 712 bond order. No further contact with Mark Humphrey. Uh, ankle monitor paid for by the county with that 24-hour curfew, except for medical court appearances, attorney visits, uh, employment, sir, as long as you apply proof of employment, name of employer, a schedule, and the exact location you'll be working. Sir, please probe that to the ankle monitoring company and to Ms. Collins. Best of luck to you, sir. It's 2500 You can leave the booth. That concludes my business, Your Honor. May I be excused? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Did Mr. Cho show up? Mr. Cho. And Your Honor, that was 2500 correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So you're waving his presence, right, Mr. Cho? He may come back in there. We never know. <laughs> Uh, 22 CP 211293 Tobias Jackson 124 days without indictment. He's got a five thousand dollar good bond as of August the 9th of criminal damage to property, second degree. Wrong. <laughs> in regards to Mr. Jackson, extensive arrest history 41 prior arrests, at least three of four, uh, forgeries and drugs, cocaine, cocaine with the intent. On misdemeanor probation currently for a simple battery on a peace officer, criminal trespass sentence March of this year for 12 months. Nothing further. Mr. Cho. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I apologize for the delay. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Mr. Jackson's going to waive presence today. Uh, we had court the other day. We waived probable cause. Officer, uh, I did advise Mr. Jackson that the officer may not appear, and um, he does not want to leave the jail. Um, I have called his aunt several times to see if we can get a mailing address. I haven't gotten a response back yet, but long and short, Your Honor, we have a plan of action. He is trying to get into a better way ministry, um, and uh, we have spoken with um, someone at the jail who is facilitating that for him as well. He'd like to be in a structured program with housing so that he does not fall back into this cycle again. Um, so, Judge. Uh, I would ask the court to consider 
a modification to the bond to a UJR upon entry and in, in, in completion or entry into a program, or I can uh, ask that this be scheduled when we have the actual uh, program. So you said he does not want to leave the jail? Yes, to be candid with the court, that's correct. Okay, so there's, is he going to get some inmate treatment? He, yes, I'd focus more on residency in a better way, but if there, you know, if, that, if, there, if there is a requirement for further, that we would certainly do well, if there's a if there's an eval that you name a show, just send me that order. Go ahead, Ms. Anjani. Um, Your Honor, the state's position is that bond is previously set as fair and reasonable. So, a better way ministry is the name of the program, Mr. Cho? Yes, but no confirmation as of yet. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how to word this so that we could do a UJR to a program, but I think, Ms. Young, I think we have to put the name of a program. Okay, um, Judge, I will uh, file it once we have the a date certain, if that if that's okay with the court. Yeah, you got any ideas, Ms. Amjadi? Is that okay if he sends a modified order? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, he's welcome to send that to me. And okay, so you can um, send it to her. So, Miss Young, we'll do it. Uh, we'll keep it like. Let me get three thousand dollar good bond UJR to a program. Mr. Cho will submit a an amended order upon. Uh, Mr. Jackson's acceptance into that program. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 111 Cone Street Northwest uh, Holiday Inn Express. So he needs to stay away from all Holiday Inn Express locations. Thank oh, you, Mr. Chow. Uh, Your Honor, I believe that concludes my business. Yeah, I, I think that's all you got, Mr. Chow. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, have a good day. All right, you too. Thank you. All right, Tiffany Hendricks. All right, so it's position 21, Ms. Correa, 22CP20878, Tiffany Hendricks, 222 days, no indictment, <laughs> burglary in the second degree, $10,000 good bond as of August the 2nd. Free trial. I'm judging regards to Tiffany Hendricks, <clears throat> a.k.a. Randall Hendricks, 75, prior arrest, histories of criminal trespass, at least eight, nope, 19 misdemeanors. Uh, six arrests for oh, probation violations, four arrests so for FBAs, five burglary. That is rough, in 2020, rough. 15 years. Nothing further. All right. Ms. Correa. Your Honor, I'll be appearing for Ms. Correa. Right. Thank you, Mr. Tessier. No problem, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Hendricks is 46 years old. He's been in Georgia for the last five years currently works as a landscaper. He's been doing that for the last few years. Has one up to the, the 12th grade, Your Honor. Your Honor, uh, when I spoke to Ms. Correa about him, she had nothing but nice things to say about him, said he's a very respectful man. Uh, Has went up to the 12th grade. I, I don't know where to begin. A very pleasant to speak with. He's been very respectful. He has been accepted into the... We are living proof program. So, Your Honor, if you're not inclined to provide a UJR into the program, we 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 beg that you at least place the bond at no more than five thousand dollars. So that way, we can try to get him to the Bell Project, so he does not lose his spot in the much needed program. Miss um, Amjadi, um, Your Honor, um, Tiffany Hendricks is an APD repeat offender. Bond has previously been set at $10,000. Given the criminal history, the state's position is that bond is previously set is fair and reasonable. So he's been in there 222 days without any indictment. All right, let's see. Also, Judge, if I may, uh, yes, I believe there are some MH issues that really need to be addressed and that are the reasons that are affecting the criminal history here. And this mm -hmm. program would definitely help to resolve this issue. Sorry, yeah. not to say that. All right, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 824 Juniper Street Northeast. That's the Atlanta Thai Kitchen and Bar. Stay out of Midtown. Midtown Atlanta. Translation: My client's crazy. And stay out of Midtown. Midtown's new. We, we've got it. We've got a new prohibition. Let's hear the rest. Atlanta. Sorry, I'm sure you know where Midtown is. Must provide an address upon release. You have to give it to the jail. 
to your lawyer, they can supply it to the state. It don't need to be filed with the clerk of court. I think it's no drugs, not weapons. I got an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, except for work, medical, attorney visits, and inmates treatment. And if you get into um, the We Are Living proof program to attend any functions, uh, anything required of that program. $5,000 good bond, sir. Best of luck to you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Tessier. All right, uh, Mauricio Wilkins, Mr. Tessier. Mar Mr. Wilkins, there you go. 22 CP 211057. 132 days with now an indictment, criminal damage to property in the second degree. There is a $5,000 good bond as of August the 1st. Three. Wow. <laughs> Mm -hmm. There it is. Mauricio, number five, nine prior arrests. Took a first offender on theft by receiving stolen property and reckless driving on arrest yes. and probation violation. <laughs> yeah, that's a fantastic uh, At idea the time of his arrest, he was on misdemeanor probation for simple assault family violence sentence 10 26 21 for 12 months. Nothing further. All right. Mr. Tessier, I know there was something here about um, maybe MH issues that were mentioned previously. So go ahead with your bond art. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, your Honor, Mr. Wilkins does have a good address at 825 Bolton Road Place. That is the incident location. However, I literally spoke to his mother, uh, Miss Rachel Wilkins, about 10 minutes ago. She said that they would like for him to return home. Um, the plan is for him to go seek uh, MH counseling once he is released, Your Honor. Uh, the home in question is his grandparents' home. I also spoke to his cousin about 10 minutes ago as well. Everybody wants him to come home. He's 24 years old, lifelong resident of Georgia. He does uh, have a job uh, as a cook and doing cleanup at a restaurant that is waiting for him uh, when he is released. He's got a uh, 12th grade education, Your Honor. And from what I understand, he does not have two or more failures to appear in the last 10 years and does not have two or more prior felony convictions. According to the pretrial report, does not have two or more violent criminal history convictions in the last 10 years. We do have a plan for him in place when he is released. He's been incarcerated 132 days, no indictment, Your Honor. So we're just asking that you that you take off maybe $2,000 off the bond so we could get him into the bail project. Matt? Miss I'm Johnny. Um, Your Honor, I was going to recommend 3500 so there's only a difference of $500 between the defense's request and my own. I will defer to the court um, and request that the no contact, uh, no further violent contact provision from the last bond order remain in place. So you wanted to be, okay, no further violent contact, no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. And here it said must seek mental uh, MH counseling once released. No further violent contact with Rachel Wilkins. Sir, this is your mother. Be good to your mother. Don't destroy anything in her house. Officer, I can't let you stay on here if you're driving. I know you got a job to do, but you're not going to get mad at me for wrecking. When you pull over, but don't, don't just turn your camera off. When you pull over, you can get back on. All right, um, so I'll make it a $3,000 good bond. I said no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. And just be good to your mother, sir. Best of luck to you. You can lay the booth. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Is that it for you, Mr. Test? You got a couple more. I'm covering uh, Ms. Correa's other one and Mr. Rashid Morrell's other one as well. All right. All right, Ms. Pinto. We got Jeremy Eden. Mr. Eden? Wave your hand. There you go. 22 CP 211200, Jeremy Eden, 127 days without indictment. There's a $10,000 good bond from, looks like first appearance, and a different judge on robbery. Reach, raw. Judge, in regards to Mr. 24 prior arrests in Missouri has an open case for an assault out of Missouri from 2021, three misdemeanor convictions, and a felony theft. Nothing further. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Pinto. Thank you, Judge. 
Um, Mr. Eden is currently residentially challenged. He does plan on going to the Atlanta Baptist Mission oh, if released from jail. Um, that is where he would receive his mail. It's at 316 Peter Street Southwest. Um, he's not currently working. He does receive disability due to have due to um, an incident in which he was shot eight times when he was living in Missouri. Um, he does not have biological family in Georgia, but he does have family friends here um, who are ties to this community. Um, he did some college at St. Louis Community College. He has, you know, only the one felony conviction that was stated by pretrial. Um, he has been incarcerated for 127 days. He did get that $10,000 bond at first appearance and, of course, has not been able to pay it. Um, we are asking the court to reduce his bond down to 5000 so that we can try to utilize the bail project. All right. What's the state? Um, the, Your Honor, although Mr. Eden only has two arrest cycles in Georgia since 2021, he does have 24 arrest cycles out of Missouri in the St. Louis area. So does that. Um, these 24 arrest cycles took place over the course of 11 years from 20, 2009 to 2021. With that criminal history in mind and considering the nature of the allegations here, Your Honor, the state's position is that bond is previously set at $10,000 is fair and reasonable for Mr. Eden. Thank you. Ms. Pinto, do you have a place that he's actually going to be living, not just getting mail? He, he plans on going to the um, Atlanta Baptist Mission, Judge. Okay. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 55 Alabama Street. Stay away from all express pharmacies. No further contact with Gregory Mitchell. Can have an income on her. Paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew except for court, lawyer, medical. Anything else, Ms. Pinto? Nailed it, 65. Um, cool. <laughs> I, I job interviews, Judge. Okay, employment and job interviews. So, sir, as long as you supply the proof of employment, name of your employer, a schedule, and the exact location you'll be working, you have to supply that to Ms. Pinto, who in turn will supply that to the state. And you have to let the ankle monitoring company know. If not, sir, they'll revoke your bond because you're violating your bond conditions. So make sure you supply all that. $7,500 good bond. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. I think that's all you have, right, Ms. Pinto? Oh, no, you got one more. Yes. Right. Quentin McCrary. The other Mr. McCrary, thank you, sir. 22 CP 210413. Quentin Lamar McCrary. 112 days without indictment. There is a $19,000 split. Bond. Do we have anybody here from the gang, or is there, are they leaving it to you, Ms. Amjani? Um, Your Honor, Ms. Jensen did tell me that she was planning to be here for this matter. All right, let's see. Okay, so we'll go to the next one, and maybe you can reach out to Ms. Chan. I don't. And she did tell me she was going to be here, Your Honor, so. Okay, we'll let you reach out. How about uh, Brian Wooten? We'll come back to that one, Ms. Pinto. Mr. Wooten? Oh, there you are. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tess here, it's 22CP211292. Brian Wooten. I don't know. About 25 the painting, days though. There is a $15,000 good bond as of I'm August the 8th. I'm just I'm sorry about my boy. Um, we wave sound in your honor. I do. Ministry. Okay. Uh, VGCSA, possession of schedule one or two. MDMA, possession with intent to distribute. Possession of marijuana with intent to distribute. Free. Wrong. <laughs> I never announced them, so you. Thank you. Just Thank a future you. reference. Um, 08 misdemeanor CWAC judge, two arrests for probation violation, 030408 sale of marijuana, open case for firearm by a convicted felon. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Tessier. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Wounds, 45 years old, lifelong resident, born and raised here in Georgia. His entire family lives here. Uh, he does have two adult children. Oh, He's got two we'll young children and one grandchild. Has completed his GED. He works for Northeastern Charter Bus Company, uh, where he cleans charter buses and is uh, supposed to be allowed to return back to work, Your Honor. Um, from my understanding from the pretrial report, he doesn't have 
two or more failures to appear within the last 10 years, doesn't have three or more violations of probation or parole within the last 10 years, and has not been convicted for two or more violent offenses within the last 10 years. But I do believe that satisfies the Iowa factors, Your Honor. We are going to be requesting a reduction of $5,000 in bond, making total bond amount $10,000, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Johnny. Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, I apologize. I was trying to reach out to ADA Jansen, so. I'm sorry, uh, it's Brian I Wooten. I found my notes. Okay. For Mr. Wooten, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Wooten is an APD repeat offender. Um, he's had 23 arrest cycles since 1994, which, while not as lengthy as some criminal histories that we see, is still fairly substantial. Um, for that reason, Your Honor, the state's position is that Bond has previously said is fair and reasonable. All right, thank so you. thank you. So we got no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Uh, stay away from 3221 Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. <laughs> but it's 3000 on each Mail count. It's a $9,000 good bond. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Honor. Thank you. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. I think it's from Mikey. <clears throat> I'm not oh, sure. Yes. Uh, I've been talking too much. How about Sire Irving, Mr. Irving? Oh, okay. Well, hold on a second. We got Miss Jansen here. I do. Sorry, Jeff. I'm so okay. sorry. I thought it was at six. No, I was sitting here waiting to get on, and so so sorry. That's okay. Waiting on me, right? No, I was waiting, thinking, oh, I wish I could get on now, and all that time you were waiting for me. So mm -hmm. so sorry. So I have a question because on <clears throat> on here before we call this, there's already second chance bail bonding posted at nineteen thousand dollars. So the ones that they were signed have already been given a bond and bonded out on those. Is that right, Miss Pinto? You got that. Yes, right. Judge. He paid a nineteen thousand dollar bond and then accountant was added and he I'm was not still Sorry. So account was added. That's the only bond we're addressing, right? The gain it's charge. Yeah. Right. All right, good thing. I wanted to make sure they hadn't came off of it. All right, it's, excuse me, it's 14 2 2 cp 210413 He's made bond on possession of marijuana and intent to distribute, possession of firearm during the commission of a felony, obstruction of a law enforcement officer, possession of drug-related objects. He's already posted that $19,000 bond through second chance bail bondings. He's been in 120, 112 days without indictment. The only charge we're addressing today is unlawful for a person employed by, associated with criminal street gang to conduct or participate in strict criminal street gang activity. Wrong. Judge, is this Mr. McCrary? Uh, this is Quentin McCrary, position 14. Okay, six prior arrests, open case. <clears throat> 22 CR 00396 61 G for reckless conduct three counts. I believe I have the only I'm um, currently on probation for aggravated assault sentence in 2014 15 year sentence seven confinement eight probation nothing further. All right. Go ahead Ms. Pinto. Thank you, Judge. Um, Mr. McCrary was originally arrested in July. As stated, he paid the bond, and then the count was added, and he was arrested again. He has been no bonded since August 18th of 2022, um, which is 112 days. He, if released, he would live at ele or uh, at an address on S Cells. It's X E L L S oh, Avenue in Atlanta. That's, that's, that's where he lives crazy. with his mother. Um, he also has two children who his mother is currently caring for, both um, aged 10. And then he has a, another child who's nine years old that lives with the child's mother. So he has three kids he's providing for. Um, for work, he has a his own LLC called Stop Sneakers. Um, he basically buys rare collectible sneakers and, and sells them kind of the only word I can think of it is like a sneaker broker. Um, he's doing that for about 105, 1.5 years. Um, yeah. He worked at a warehouse through a temp service and then also at a Chili's. 
as a line cook, which he did for about three years total, Judge. So he does have strong ties to the community. He has a strong employment history. Um, he finished his 11th grade at Washington High School, and he's working on getting his GED. He signed up for the program at the jail, and he's received the practice book and has started doing that, but they haven't put him in classes yet. Mm -hmm. Also signed up for the pre-stabilization class um, and new beginnings class as well. So he's taking whatever opportunities are available to him at the jail. Um, he is having serious back issues, sleeping on a boat in the overcrowded jail. He does have a bone disease, so it's certainly not assist helping that in any way. Um, as stated, he has already paid 19 What the hell? He's sleeping on a boat in the overcrowded jail? Is this a maritime court? What? Is, I, 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 did I hear that wrong? It might be the cocktails. Somebody, somebody make it make sense for me. $1,000 on this case, Judge. So I'm asking for a $10,000 bond or lower on the new charge. Um, and so that he may, you know, return to his family and uh, assist in his defense. All right, Ms. Jansen. Yes, Judge, this is Sire Irving, right? This is uh, Quentin McCrary. <sighs> okay. You got to do oh, that. Quentin McCrary. Do you need me to repress the, do the case number again? It's position We're 14. Well, okay. Uh, thank you, Judge. I apologize. I was having okay. a little bit of audio. Um, judge, the state's concern is is the gang count, obviously, um, that has now been added. That's what's only the only thing that's in front of the court. Um, when the case is elevated by an enhancement statute, such as the gang count, um, that actually changes the nature of the underlying charge to the point where we're concerned about his ties to the community being uh, the gang, as well as the uh, safety of the community propensity to commit further felonies because of um, the. Ah, so he's got ties to the community, but they're the wrong sort of ties. <laughs> it's a solid argument. Pressure uh, that he faces from his loyalty to the gang. Um, if he were not a, a documented member, then we wouldn't have added these charges, um, the extra warrant. Um, after further investigation, um, the state would ask uh, for a $500,000 bond on this extra count. Thank you. And no contact with any known gang members under 1615 subsection L. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons, no replica of weapons. Stay away from 30 Marietta Street Southwest. No further contact with any gang members, gang associates. Anything like that of Roland 60s neighborhood crypt. That's the one, right, Miss Jansen? That's what yes. I can figure out through there. Yes, Judge. All right. Um, you have an ankle monitor paid for by the worker project. That's with 24 hour curfew except for court, lawyer, or medical. Could we add a work exception to that, Judge? Ms. Jansen. Yeah, he wants to sell some sneakers. Work, sir, if you get released from work, you have to pro provide proof of employment, the name of that employment, the name of the employer, a schedule, and a location. If you do not supply that, you have to supply that to your attorney who supplies it to the state, and you have to supply that to the ankle monitoring company. Now, what that means is you get up, you get in your car, you go straight to work, legal work, like working at McDonald's. Working at Chick Fil A, something like that. All right, where there is a location where you work, and you have to provide a schedule. You have to do that every single week. If your schedule comes up every week, okay? Thumbs up, thumbs up. But at Ankle Monitor, there'll be a twenty-four hour curfew. That means you don't do anything, sir. I'll allow you to veer off about a mile from your trip to work to get home to fill up with gas. Ah, uh, we got there. $350,000 good bond. Best of luck to you, sir. Judge, that concludes my business. May I be excused? Yes, ma'am. All right, now we got Sire Irving. Mr. Irving? Thank you. You can leave, Mr. McCrary. Leave the booth. Leave the Have a good evening. Thank you, sir. All right, Stopping Irving. It's position six, pretrial. 
two two CP two one 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 eight five hundred twenty eight days without indictment. Got theft by receipt. It's a three thousand dollar split bond so far. So you got theft by receiving stolen property felony, escape felony. I'm off for a person employed by associated with criminal street gang to conduct and participate in criminal street gang activity. Unlawful for a person to acquire, maintain through criminal gang activity or proceeds derived from such activity. Unlawful for a person to commit offenses with the intent to obtain or earn status in a criminal street gang. Willful obstruction of law enforcement officer, pedestrian and roadway, and misdemeanor possession of marijuana. Great. Wow. Judge, in regards to Mr. Sire Irving, seven prior arrests and conviction for the street gang activity, theft by receiving stolen property. On probation for that, 20 SC 175-703. Three years confinement, 12 years probation. Another probation, street gang activity, theft by receiving stolen property obstruction. Sentence 12 to 21. 19 SC 164-765 for 15 years probation. Nothing further. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, there you go, sir. Ms. Salmonoff, go ahead. Uh, yes, Judge. Um, I just I just wanted to make clear the uh, three thousand dollar split bond. That's only on the misdemeanors alleged. Um, right, just the misdemeanors. The yeah, right, Judge. Yeah. All the other charges don't have any bond. He's been in for 128 days, so he is entitled at this point. Um, he is 22 years old as of uh, last Sunday. Um, he lives at 800 West Marietta Street, Northwest Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. Um, he lives with his sister, Carrington Irving. Um, he is original, originally from, from California, but uh, the whole family moved down here to Georgia in 2012. Um, so for ha half of his life, he's been living here and has significant con connections to the community um, just through his family. Um, he has a GED. He has a job waiting for him at Labor Staffing, um, which is a, a temp agency. Um, and he can go back to that immediately. He was also working um, housekeeping at Marriott, um, so he, he is employable. Uh, judge, um, we're asking for a $10,000 total bond uh, on everything. Uh, the reason that we're asking for, for that bond is that there are some issues with the case that I have seen just reading the warrants. Um, uh, there's There's various legal issues that, that, that the warrants present. I know this is not a prelim. However, I am mentioning that in mitigation in regards to bond um, and the fact that he has significant connections to the community and the fact that though these charges, the alleged charges involve uh, alleged gang activity, it is only property crime that is alleged of a single vehicle judge. Okay. And there's, um, by the way, just so you know, there are one, two, three warrants out there for violation of probation. Yes, Judge. Let's see, well, at least one from violation of probation, the one assigned to Judge Eaton, um, that was filed on August the 29th. So I'm assuming that hasn't been addressed. So you understand he's he won't be going anywhere. Okay. I, I know, Judge. Go ahead, Ms. Jansen. Judge, um, as the court uh, just said, Oh, you disappeared for a minute. No, no, it just, I went blurry, so oh, sorry. About that. <laughs> uh, judge, uh, you know, as the court just uh, stated, and I will restate, uh, there is a probation warrant for him because he is already on probation, first offender, um, for the gang act and for the same offenses, which um, he is going, we are doing a motion to revoke. Uh, it's 15 years. Uh, the state uh, says he, he went out and did it again. That shows you uh exactly uh the propensity to commit yeah, more felonies and the same cool. felonies it also shows you how strong his ties are to the community of gang members um his gang members and his loyalty and his um inability his decision not to stop even when given first offender uh by one of our superior court judges um the state is concerned about safety of community Property crimes are people crimes. The property belongs to people. Um, it's done in groups that are gang up on people um, and their property. Uh, we know this. Uh, we have issues with intimidation of witnesses um, in a case of this nature. Uh, for all of these reasons, Judge, the state is asking for a $1 million bond. 
the um, even though I know that there are probation warrants there, Judge, we're looking at this case by itself. That is what the state is asking, as I stated, as a one million dollar bond and to be broken down to um, to. A Oh, oh! Someone, someone will show, show, show Judge Manning the goat. There, there's no two ways about it. She doesn't want to see it, but she'll see it whether she wants to or not. Total of one million dollars, and again, asking for no contact with any known <laughs> gang members or associates or affiliates under sixteen fifteen four subsection L, as is mandated by the statute. Thank you, Judge. Okay. We got no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons, no further contact with Derika Harris, no contact with any gangs, any associates or affiliates with any gangs, no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. Sorry, lost my track. Stay away from 800 West Marietta Street, 788 West Marietta Street, and 830 West Marietta Street. No further contact with anyone at the um, Fast Life Group. No further contact with, I think this would be a possible co-defendant here, D-A-E-M-O-N-D Harris. And I have an ankle monitor paid for by the county through the ORCA project with a 24-hour curfew for court, lawyer, medical. So we're addressing theft by receiving stolen property, 10000 felony escape, 75000 unlawful uh, point three of the first gang, Four hundred thousand. Number four. Count four. Four hundred thousand. Count five. Four hundred thousand. Woo. And She's then six, seven, and eight are all misdemeanors at one thousand dollars apiece. Ten thousand. Seventy-five thousand. Four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. One. One and one as previously. There you have. Four, if there's a hold, and you get out, and they don't revoke your, or they revoke your probation, and you get out, and you're able to make that. Um, significant bond. You'll have 48 hours to have that ankle monitor placed on your ankle. If you do not, that's a violation of your bond. And also, ooh, forgot this. On the, no social media. I'm going to add that to the other one too. No social media. That means, sir, you're not getting out. You're not going home. You are going to be there. No matter what this bond is, even if it was a dollar, you'd still be there. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. Judge, that completes my business. Uh, may I be excused? Yes, have a good evening. I think that's it for you too, right, Miss Jansen? I think so. All right, you have a good evening. Y'all have a good weekend. Oh, yes, you too. Thank you, Judge. All right, so I've got... Uh, I've got two left, right? Why is there three people in here? Oh, that's Judge, a good idea. Judge, the five north booth two is Billy Valderas. Are we resetting that case? Oh, yes. Uh, sir, we're going to, uh, well, I guess not. It's indicted, right? Um, how about set it out two weeks? That should give you guys time, right, Ms. Amjadi, to get, find out what's going on. So, Mr. Balderas, you've been in your case, you've been this. indicted. There's only two more. So, um, I'm not going to address bond, which means you'll go in front of whoever, the whichever court, the judges, whichever courtroom this is assigned to. But they're having trouble finding the actual indictment. So, that's why we keep bringing you back. So, you're... Um, Bond stands as it is, and I think it is. Um, you can have Mc, you can have McBurney throw the book at you. It's just bond as it is. <laughs> you got a seventy thousand dollar good bond, so it'll stand at that. Thank you, sir. You can leave the booth. I'm sure uh, Miss Collins will get in touch with you. All right. Let's see. Uh, Kayon Giles. Thank you, sir. 128 days without indictment. 22 CP 211179. Kalon Giles. Robbery by sudden snatching, possession of firearm by a convicted felon, possession of firearm or a knife during the commission or attempt to commit certain felonies, giving a false name, address, date of birth to a law enforcement officer. There is a $40,000 good bond as of, excuse me, August the 4th. Rob. Six prior arrests in regards to Mr. Giles. Uh, 2019 theft by receiving stolen property, criminal damage to property, currently on probation for criminal use of an auto ID, firearm by a first offender, sentence in 2021 for 10 years, nothing further. All right, Mr. Cazzoli, go ahead. Good evening, Your Honor. Thank you for, uh, for, for waiting for me. I was on the way back from the jail. Um, Mr. Giles is 23 years old. Uh, he has a good address at 746 Mayland Avenue. 
Atlanta, Georgia, 30310, uh, where he lives with his father. He's been living there for the last five years. He's a lifelong Atlanta resident. Um, along with his dad, he has his mother, his grandmother, um, his uh, his 10-month-old child, um, and his aunt. Um, my apologies. The, the child is now over a year old. He was 10 months uh, when he was incarcerated, um, and he still has a child on the way, I believe, Your Honor. Um, he was previously working at Sky, um, Sky Cylinder, which is a warehouse doing loading. He'd been doing that for the last two years. Um, Your Honor, I heard um, some relatively limited history, um, only six cycles, um, and only a couple of convictions, I believe. Uh, Your Honor, his bond is currently set at 40000 We're asking for that bond to be reduced by half to 20000 He would still not be able to afford that, Your Honor, but we just want to, uh, we want that number to be moving in a direction that uh, he would be able to afford. Um, as far as I know, Your Honor, based on the warrant and based, he's not at a preliminary hearing yet, but based on the warrant, um, the firearm alleged to have been there is not alleged to have been used in the activity, Your Honor, so we are asking for that context to be included as well um, and for his bond not to exceed 20000 all right, Miss Johnny. That attorney has a fabulous head of hair. I'm going to say that. that. That's all I've got to say. And though there are only eight arrest cycles, they did all occur within the last six years since 2016. Um, given the defendant's criminal history and the nature of the allegations here, the defendant is a danger to the community and the state respectfully requests that bond remain as previously set figure, which is fair and reasonable. All right, let's see. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew except for court, lawyer or medical. Um, are you wanting, he lives in Atlanta, is, what does his job prospects look like now? Your Honor, I have not been in contact with uh, anybody he's working with. Uh, Mr. Giles, do you know if uh, if you still have your job, sir, if you were to be released? You're not sure? Okay. So, like, oh. uh, and if it's a job, just, you know, shoot me an amended order for a job. That's a 24-hour curfew, sir. It means you can't leave your house. No further contact with Charlottetine, C-H-A-R-L-O-T-T-I-N-E, Banks, B-A-N-K-S. No drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from all murder stations, all murder property. And no further contact with your co-defendant, Marcus Brooks. That means all property, sir. If you walk by a bus stop on the side of the road, you have to. You can't even sit down on that bench and tie your shoe. You have to walk past that, sit down on a curb somewhere and tie your shoe. All right? Somebody's wearing a murder t-shirt, that's murder property. Don't go around them. <laughs> Five thousand, twelve thousand, twelve thousand, two thousand. Five thousand, twelve thousand, twelve thousand, two thousand. Good bond. Best of luck to you, sir. You can lay the boots. All right. So, and I think that's it for you, right, Mr. Gazzoli? I think Mr. Tessier's hand in the last one. Uh, I think so, Your Honor. I was representing. I was not here for your announcement. I was representing uh, Miss Cole's uh, clients. Um, to my understanding, I think one of them was indicted and the other two received bonds yesterday. So uh, I assume they were not brought over. Yes, sir. That, that's it. I think okay. uh, you can handle those. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Your Honor. Take care. All right. Have a good weekend. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's not a bond condition. That's just good, friendly advice. And Mr. <laughs> Tess here. So now we got Mr. Kibion Glenn. Am I right? All right, Mr. Glenn. I'm sorry about my um, sorry about my voice. 291 days without indictment. We got 22 CP 206837. Possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. Armed robbery. Armed robbery. Armed robbery. Aggravated assault with intent to rob. Aggravated assault with intent to rob. Aggravated assault with intent to rob. Right now there is a hundred seventy thousand dollar good bond. Rob. Which defendant? Uh, Gavion Glenn. Bostic, I think you just want me to sing to you like I did Miss Jackson today, but my singing voice is messed up. Oh, please. Don't. Oh, you're right, John. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, preach, Ralph. Oh, there it is, number two. Uh, judge, in regards to Mr. Glenn, 16 prior arrests, uh, one misdemeanor conviction, uh, one FTA 2018, three arrests for probation violation. 2019 entering auto two counts and 2019 crossing guard lines. Nothing further. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Tessier. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Also, side note, I'd like to hear that song you know, <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> thank, thank you. Plastic don't know the music. Oh, Randy. <laughs> uh, for Mr. That's Glenn, like uh, show here that he's 22 years old, Your Honor. Lifelong resident, born and raised in Georgia. We do have a good address for him at 601. I can't read the handwriting. I believe it's the Navari Drive in Stone Mountain, Georgia. He does yes, have his GED, Your Honor. He does not have his parents anymore, unfortunately. Um, so it will have to be his friends that come together and, and make this this bond payment for him, Your Honor. His, his parents are no longer here. Uh, he does have a newborn child that was born while he's been in custody. He has been in custody 291 days, Your Honor. No indictment. Um, he had a preliminary hearing all the way back in August of this year, Your Honor. Still no indictment. Victim is not opposed to him being released. This has been confirmed by our office. They don't even live in this state, Your Honor. So he is not um, a threat to you know, intimidate the witness or anything like that. I read the pretrial report here. He does not have prior felony convictions, does not have two or more failures to appear, has not been convicted for two or more violent offenses in the last 10 years. Again, Your Honor, I want to stress that he did have his preliminary hearing back in August. Case is still not indicted. His bond is completely unreachable for him. So we're going to ask, Your Honor, if you can lower the bond to $50,000 which is still going to be unbelievable for his friends to try to put money together, but that is what we're requesting, Your Honor. Who's on Jody? Your Honor, my office has spoken with the victims today, and all three of them were opposed to his receiving a bond. I don't know if perhaps um, my colleague's office reached out to a different victim, perhaps, um, but I somebody, we have a, so, I'm sorry, we have a Janice Dwyer. Yes, Ms. she is one of the victims, Your Honor, as is Miss Lisa Bono. Yeah, they're both here. Uh, Miss Dwyer, Miss Bono, would oh, either of you like to say anything? I am opposed to, this is Janice Dwyer. Okay, I am I'm, opposed. I'm sorry, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, you, you have to turn your camera on, though, when you talk to me. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Um, Okay. When the victims show it, it doesn't And then before you say anything, just hold up, I got to swear you in. You All right, ma'am, if you raise your right hand, you swear a firm testimony about to give us the truth, told truth, nothing but the truth. I do. All right, go ahead, um, Ms. Dwyer. Am I I was Dwyer? I'm sorry, I was asked um, if, if we uh, were opposed to him being released, and yes, I am. Okay, and he was previously set a bond, and you understand he's been in more than... 90 days. So after 90 days, he has statutorily required, we're statutorily required to give him a bond. So right now he has a $170,000 good bond, which means he has to get it through a, a bonding company. I mean, he can post the cash, but he has to have a property or the bonding company, okay? Mm -hmm. But I do want you know, he, he's entitled to a bond by the law, okay? Yeah. Yes. But, but I appreciate it. it Ms. Bono, if you don't mind raising your right hand for me. That's it. Ms. Bono, do you swear for him? Testimony you're about to give is the truth, whole truth, crowd. nothing but the truth. Yes, I do, Your Honor. All right. I'll hear from you, Ms. Bono. Same thing. I hope you heard that, that, you know, he's statutorily required. I have to give him a bond by law because he's been in more than 90 days without getting indicted. Yes, I do understand that. Uh, but personal opinion, I would oppose the bond. Okay. Uh, are both of you still in fear for your safety? We're certainly not in the general area anymore, uh, but I do sleep better in knowing now that he is not on the street. Okay, and thank you both. Um, you can stay on. I see your videotape in there yourself or whatever, but that, that's fine. <laughs> There's another one of our group that wasn't invited to this, and we're not sure why. This involved four people, and there were only three people or three, church, three different counts listed from what I saw on the indictment, but there were four of us. So I have fourth person. I'm recording this for him. I have Bono Dwyer Dwyer. What is that accent? It sounds like Boston to me, but I might. I don't know. I don't have the Eastern accent straight. But she doesn't. She does not sound like she's from Georgia. Um, but you know, I give her credit. She or both of them. They're just like this sucked, and we're gonna you know step in and say uh, please don't help this guy. What's who's the other person? Webb Robert Webb Robert. Webb. He is Mr. No. Webb. Mr. Webb. 
Mr. Webb? Oh. Hello? Mr. Webb, can you turn your camera on for me, please? Yes. While we're waiting, we'll we'll let the the goat say what he has to say. All right, sir. If you raise your, you raise your right hand, you swear firm testimony you're about to give is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. All right, Mr. Webb. Um, I'm not sure if you heard the same thing. So by law, he's required to get a bond because he's been in over 90 days, and the case hasn't been indicted. It has nothing to do with me, but he has to get a bond. So go ahead and give me your right now. I, I don't know if you heard it's a $170,000 uh, straight bond or a good bond. So I understand, yes, that he is okay to get a bond for there, but I, I'm opposed to it as well. So guess what y'all say is you're supposed to be lowering the bond. Correct. Okay. Yeah, it's like the judge gets it. It's like, okay, three people are upset and they don't want him released. They don't understand what, what it means with bond. The first one messed it up and said, you know, um, whatever she 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 didn't understand like no bond would would mean that he's not let out but they have to give a bond under the circumstances so she said i, I would impose a bond and like well yeah that's what we're doing that they answer the question is what's the number it's it's all kind of cute but, but the judge understands it you, you, you they could uh, theoretically a victim could show up and say you know what i think he learned his lesson you know don't don't hold him up on my account but that's not what they're saying these three are saying Hold this guy. It's disgusting. And I agree with him. All right, Miss Lamjati, um, thank all three of you. And uh, Mr. Wire, I'm assuming that the, I don't know the name, but the other Dwyer is your son, your husband. Or... It's my husband. Okay. All right. And I'm assuming he means to, he wants the, the same thing. He does, yes. Okay. Go ahead, Miss Lamjati. Also, real quick, Your Honor, I do apologize. That is the note that I have here. Uh, so I just want you to know I'm being upfront with the court. I was told. Okay. Oh, I'm okay. Go, so go ahead, Ms. Anjani. Uh, and additionally, one thing that I really can't ignore and must bring to the attention of the court is the defendant has had 16 arrest cycles, one six since 2016. That is really substantial. It's a figure we really can't ignore because it's sort of um, empirical proof that the defendant poses a, a certainty of reoffending. In addition to the fact that the victims um, do have concerns for their personal safety, any subsequent harassment or intimidation by the defendant, uh, the defendant's actions show that he is a danger to the community. And for all of these reasons, the state's position here is that bond as previously set is fair and reasonable, and we respectfully request that the court keep bond at the prior figure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a bond that I set before. Simple guy. Um, it looks like Judge Drake gave bond in the um, the amount set here, Your Honor. 20K for the possession of a firearm charge. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I could usually tell if it's if it's if it's what I did because it kind of all reads the same. All right. <clears throat> so there's no drugs unless prescribed. No alcohol. No weapons. You're gonna have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew. You can only leave your home, sir, for a court lawyer or to seek medical attention. You also need to make sure that if you move, you supply an address to the state, which means through your attorney and to this ankle monitoring company. Don't think there's a hold on him. Stay away from 265 Peachtree Center, um, Ave oh, Peachtree Central Avenue. Also, sir, you're going to have to stay out of Fulton County. That means you can't come to Fulton County unless you're here for court or to see your lawyer. That is the only reason you can come to Fulton County. So if you got to go, let's say, to you live in DeKalb, let's say you got to go to Cobb County. Get on to it. Fill up a gas in DeKalb County. Get on 25. Go to Cobb County. Fill up a gas in Cobb County, go back to Cab County. Don't run out of gas. Don't get a flat tire. Don't do any of that. Any of that that you do and it happens in Fulton County, that's a violation of your bond condition. All right? <laughs> no further contact with Lisa Bono, B-O-N-O, -O, Brian Dwyer, D-W-Y-E-R, Janice Dwyer, 
and Robert Webb, W-E-B-B. -B. Stay away from all Marriott hotels. So all these previous bonds are set. So uh, 20 on count one. Sorry, four. Judge. Um, which, which hotels did you say stay away from? Oh, Marriott hotels. All right. All right. Uh, 40 on count two, 40 on count three, 40 on count four. Hold on a second. You know what? Since I'm adding something, so I'm going to leave all the bonds the same as they are, except for since I'm adding it, that means I have to modify the bond a little bit. So oh, yeah. on possession of a farm during the commission of a felony, it's at 20. I'm going to reduce it to 19,000. So it went from 170,000 to 169,000. So I had to mod since I'm modifying your conditions, I'm modifying the bonds. Best of luck to you, sir. You can lay the base. I'm sorry, Judge. I missed that that total. Well, I'm leaving everything. What's well, 169? I only took uh, uh, 1,000 off of count one. Since I modified the bond conditions, and I obviously need to um, do this. So, best of luck to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, they must need need to to change statutorily. Must need to change the amount if they're modifying the bond conditions. So, so she. She, she takes it down 1,000. <laughs> that's funny. Much judge that does complete my business. It was a pleasure seeing you. May I be excused? Oh, you too, Mr. Uh, Tess here. Have a good weekend. Sorry, uh, you can you leave too. the list. All right, so we had someone on here. We had, like, SPO Baskin who was driving. Was he supposed to be here for something? Yes, I was originally supposed to be here for... Um, it was a case against Bondi Humphrey. All right. Well, I think that's it. I I, I don't want to see him, uh, you know, smacking around at the end of the call. Wait, wait. Here we are. This is my good luck charm because I don't think I muted myself this time. I could be wrong, but I don't think I muted myself. But we have discovered a new friend. Yes, it's either Manny. Named after Judge Manning, or <laughs> or what? What was the other one? What we were thinking about calling him Taser. <laughs> <laughs> I've had him for a while. I like I liked him at the office, but uh, I just happened to bring him back because I had some other stuff today. Good times, good times. Thanks everybody for everything. FD Food Fairy and her fantastic new book based on Law Talk with Mike. <laughs> Oh, it's good times. It's good times. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. Have a happy Friday. Do not drink and drive. I will see you all soon.